Hank chuffed alongside. Hello. Howdy, Thomas. Now, you look like one of the finest little engines I've ever seen. Thomas didn't like being called little. I'm a tank engine. Thomas thought Hank was being cheeky. Those freight cars are way too heavy for you. Let me take them for you. Hank meant to be helpful, but it made Thomas cross. No, thank you. I'm strong enough to pull much heavier loads than this. I'd be happy to help. But Thomas was already puffing out of the docks. Thomas pulled up to the hall. He was nearly out of puff. Hello, Farmer McCall. This is Hank. He's the new engine on Sodor. Howdy, Farmer McCall. That's a mighty fine tractor you have. Say, Thomas, you look all out of puff and pull. I'll take it for you. No, thank you. Thomas huffed, and he puffed, and his wheels spun and spun. Come on, Thomas, the train's too heavy for you. Take the pressure off your pistons. Couple me up. But Thomas was determined to pull the train on his own. We must not be late for your party. Wheel turn by wheel turn, Thomas puffed away. Thomas and Hank arrived at Marin Station. Visitors waved at Thomas. Howdy, everybody. Thomas is a little overloaded right now. I'll whistle for him. Hank had lots of steam, and Hank blew the longest and loudest whistle. Then there was trouble. Thomas had cracked the cylinder. The train was much too heavy. Oh, no. Now the deliveries won't be made. You won't be back in time for your welcome party. And I'm not a really useful engine, or even a really strong one. Shucks, Thomas. I'm so sorry. That's too bad. I wanted to show you that I wasn't just a fine little steam engine. I wanted to show you that I am really strong. So I didn't want to ask for your help. But I do now. Please, Hank. I'd be happy to help. You give the orders, I'll do the pushing. Finally, Thomas and Hank delivered the new machines to the factory. Hank pushed Thomas back to Knapford Station. They arrived just in time for the party. Thank you, Hank. Now all of Sodor knows what a strong engine you are. Hank smiled. And I know something, too. You're the engine everyone cheers for on Sodor. That's something to be proud of. Thomas smiled. Hank was very special. He was a very special new friend. All the engines and children love to make wishes whenever they see the tree, especially Henry. He thinks the wishing tree is magical. He whistles whenever he passes. A summer storm struck Sodor last night. The wishing tree was hit by lightning. All the engines were upset. Henry the most upset of all. Some special woodsmen are arriving at Brendam Docks. Henry, you are to take them to the wishing tree right away. Henry knew this was an important job. Henry arrived at the wishing tree. It wasn't standing tall anymore. Some leaves were gone and some branches were broken. Sometimes, Henry, special woodsmen have to cut trees down. Oh, no. Now Henry was even more upset. Then Henry had an idea. If all the tracks were blocked, no one would be able to get to the tree, he thought. Then no one would be able to cut the tree down. Henry had the longest line of freight cars a big engine could pull. At last, Henry puffed to the wishing tree junction. All the lines to the wishing tree were blocked. Now nobody can get through. The wishing tree will be safe. Then he heard Harold hovering above him. Hello, Henry! The special woodsmen can't get through to the wishing tree. They're the only ones that can help. Without them, the tree will have to be cut down. Oh, dear. 
The woodsmen are here to save the wishing tree, not cut it down. I have made a very big mistake. Now, I must put everything right as fast as I can. And he chuffed quickly away. At last, all the tracks were clear. Henry collected the special woodsman. Thank you, Salty. Then he wished quickly away. They cleared and propped, they clipped and chopped. And Henry helped too. Soon the wishing tree was standing tall again. The wishing tree was saved. I wish the wishing tree lasts forever and ever. The special woodsman cheered. And Henry smiled his biggest smile ever. He whistled as he rolled down the other side. Then he saw a thick hedge across the track. Oh, no! Peter Sam crashed through the hedge. With a clang and a prank, he hit something hard. Fizzling fireboxes! Some farm workers appeared to see what the noise was. Oh, my! Look! It's a statue of Proteus. It looks very old. Peter Sam thought his boiler would burst. Then an idea flew into his funnel. No one must see the statue before the show. It will be my wonderful surprise, and I will be the star of the show, he thought. <coughs> Peter Sam tooted to the workers. <coughs> Please, can you cover the statue? I'll be back to collect it soon. The farm workers had covered the statue of Proteus. Peter Sam was coupled up to the flatbed. Peter Sam pumped his piston. The cream churns were heavy, but the Proteus statue was even heavier. Peter Sam huffed and puffed to the top of the hill. Peter Sam raced down the hill. There was a junction ahead. Oh no, this load is too heavy. Help! Peter Sam smashed into a buffer. The cream churns crashed. The junction was blocked. Bubbling boilers! I'll never be the star of the show now. The other ranchers can't get through. I've spoiled everything for everyone. Then Peter Sam heard the whistles of his friends. Duncan, Freddy, and Mighty Mac arrived at the junction. They were surprised at the mess. Peter Sam felt very silly. I'm sorry. I wanted to be the star of Miss Marvel's show. The statue belongs to us all. Please, will you help me take it to the show? His friends were happy to help. Duncan chuffed away to find a mechanic for Peter Sam. Mighty Mac puffed to tell Mr. Percival about the statue. Freddy, will you take Proteus to the show? <coughs> Freddy was delighted. It would be an honor. Miss Marvel was finishing her last story. Oh, my. The statue is still covered. Today, one of our engines found something very special. So this is for all the little engines of the hills, because you are all special. Everyone gasped at the wonderful statue. The engines whistled. Peter Sam smiled. We are all stars of the show. <laughs>